Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to generally nerdy. Generally nerdy. Generally nerdy. What's up, nerds? We are here with author Carolyn Kay talking about her new book. Say it for me one more time, because I'm I'm still drawing I'm still drawing the wrong letters. It's Sakevra. Sakevra. All right. So because it, it is it independently published, right? Yes, yes, it is. Because that was your thing that you were talking about last year at Starfest was was how how to be published effectively was one of the things you brought up, not necessarily right. at a panel on, but fire, it was talked about. Fire uh, drill buddy over here. Um, so, kind of walk us through the process from where you were last year to where you are now with the book, like, like getting it published. Okay, so last year I was still kind of in the drafting phase of it, so went through, did all my drafts, sent it out to my critique group, got their, their info back, did my edits, sent it to my editor. Right. Got her edits back, put all that together, um, and then once I got all that done, I do all my own interior book design, so that's making all the letters look pretty on the page and all right. that kind of stuff. Um, and then from there, then you have to format it for ebooks, you have to format it for right. Amazon, right. you have to format it for print. <laughs> so there's like, I think I use three or four different software programs to do all that. Plus, I have to get Chaz to do my covers Artwork. and my interior art right. and put all that together. Um, so once all that magic happens, then it all gets uploaded to all the various, you know, Amazon and Smashwords and Kobo and right. dra draft to digital, all the places. How, how's it doing now that it's out there? How, how are you it's, feeling it pretty good? It's been doing okay. It's Talking only been well. out for a week. So good. just trying to get the word out that it's, that it's out and there. ready to go. Yeah. You said that you got the, got it to your editor and, and if you're DIY, if you're self-publishing, did you enlist a friend or, because I, there's a lot of people out there who want to do their own book but they right. don't know where that starts so I actually I paid for an editor but she was actually recommended to me by a fellow um, local area author who really really liked her um, and I had read some of his books and saw the quality um, of his writing and the editing and stuff and so that's why I went with her but um, I would suggest for anybody who's looking into doing their own self publishing if you really want to do it well pay the money for an editor it's absolutely worth it so as far as promotion, which you brought up too, how are you are you promoting exclusively online? Uh, what's what's that process looking like? So we start out with obviously social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. But those algorithms are working I against know. you now. I know. Yeah, I paid for a Facebook ad when we had the cover reveal, and it. I think I got two pre-orders off of that out of the 2,500 people it that said they it. Yeah, I'm like, put okay. it in front of. Um, so I try and do social media, but we also start a newsletter. And okay. so, so when you're at conventions, people, we, uh, people have interest, yeah, they sign up. They sign up. We send out a newsletter like once a month. We give them updates on the book progress. Chaz is working on a tarot deck. So we, you know, hey, Chaz has got three new cards done. And so we use that as a way to promo. And we actually get better response with the, the newsletter. Have you, have you looked into or done any crowdfunding, Patreon, anything like that? No. Especially for maybe some of his tarot cards? Chaz is actually on Patreon. Okay. Um, so Chaz... Patreon.com slash Chaz Kemp. I will promo him um, for for his art and his his tarot deck. I have not yet, just because I'm not. I don't feel like I'm prolific enough to give my patrons enough for a monthly sure. thing. You know, um, if I could write a short story a month, then I would absolutely do a Patreon. I am not that fast. Well, <laughs> some authors I know do like chapters. You know, this right. month I finished this chapter, so here you go, early release on the chapter. Yeah. Understood. Either way. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a thought too. I hadn't thought about doing chapters, but. I know. I had, I interviewed a guy at Denver Comic Con two years ago named Eric Laster, who was giving out the first three chapters of his book for free at his booth. Oh, okay. And and it was it was bound similarly to his book. Um, and then if you like, he his thing was go home and read this. If you like it, I got the rest of the book right here. So oh, that's cool. Another kind of thing that that other self-published authors are doing is uh it seemed really effective because i did it and he got an interview and promotion and such nice so, nice something yeah. to think about um so 
with the change in the algorithm, since you do rely on social media, how has that kind of affected, like you said, you, you got two pre-orders, but have you seen any any other noticeable positives coming through your social media? Um, we get, I do get um, comments every now and again. You get, you know, a certain number of likes sure. and that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm hoping it generates at least some interest and, and people at least know that it's out there. Um, Cause that's kind of my goal. It's like, it's out there. And so hopefully people will go look for it. Okay. Uh, so specifically about the book then, Give us the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch. So, um, Sekevra is actually the second in the right. trilogy of what we're I'm now calling Galicel's tale. Cool. Um, it continues with um, the elven princess Galicel, and she is now in exile. So she has returned to Ashalon, which is the mortal realms, and um, she is still continuing to right the wrongs of Queen Victoria, but now she has to do it with a price on her head. So it's dealing with fey kind of elements? and Yeah, so our this, the world of Ashalon is a steampunk fantasy world. Oh, sweet. Um, I remember that. Hence the freaking <laughs> panel. Okay, sorry. So in, in the world of Ashalon, in, in 1800, a comet hit what um, we would associate with South America. Sure. And aside from the environmental damage of a major comet hitting the, the planet, fairy glamour went away. And so that that big neighbor who, you know, Bob down the street, you knew he worked in the factory. Well, it turns out he's a troll. Uh, so the Spoiler alerts for book one, by yeah. the way. <laughs> Bob's not actually in there, but we might do a short story for there him. There you go. Um, so, Patrons, here you come. Yeah, exactly. So this all takes place about 50 years later. The Fae and the humans have kind of readjusted to the new norm of there's fairies walking down the street. Um, but yeah, Queen Victoria has some machinations behind the scenes. and Brilliant. Well, wish you all the luck on your book. I'm so glad to see that it got published and everything is moving in the right direction. Sorry, Facebook sucks. <laughs> I'm dealing with the same thing. I was up to, I had my reach up to about 4,000 a week. Wow. And it's dropped almost uh, more than half. Oh no. So yeah. I'm I'm feeling feeling the same thing. Yeah, hopefully they'll change it again, you know, it has its ups and downs, so we just got to ride that wave. Yeah. <laughs> Being independent though. It's it's makes tough. That difficult. It's tough. Yeah. So uh, I guess the one more question before we end this then because you guys are independent, what do you do for steady income? Is this exclusively your job now? No, no. I have I have a full-time career outside of this. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a I'm a data spatial data coordinator for a state agency. You're a computer geek. A little bit, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. The name of the channel is generally nerdy. Geeks and nerds are all good good stuff. Uh yeah, that's so so that allows you enough time to focus on your work because you're only nine to five? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, regular forty hour a week job and then I can come home and write when I'm not belly dancing. So. <laughs> oh, you belly dance too. <laughs> I missed that one dance. last year. Yeah, I, it's not something I do a lot anymore, but I, I am part of a what they call a, a tribal troop? fusion oh, okay. troupe. And so, yeah, we perform randomly at places. And Fair enough. I know they had belly dancing here. Did you catch any of that? Actually, I, I know most of the, I actually know all of the girls because yeah. I danced with them in the past. Nice. So. <laughs> well, right on. Again, thank you very much, Carolyn. Thank I you for having you me. All the bust on the, all the bust. Edits. I wish you all the best <laughs> Thank on you. your book. I'm so super stoked that uh, local art and local writers are, are getting out there and things are happening. So yeah. we're going to stick it to Facebook and Instagram yet. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate all right. you. Thank you. All right, guys. That's it. <laughs>